All right, Ms. Das, if you could tell us about the current projects of our organization. Um, so, Enlitex is a data analytics company, especially in healthcare. We do predictive analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence. The idea is to look at granular forms of data and analyze it to drive insights out of it. Now, these insights are based on variables. So, it could be reducing readmissions, uh, planning a chronic care episode, uh, planning preventative care, uh, looking for overall a population at risk and say five or seven chronic diseases, mm. uh, and a lot of automated coding uh, which is required for say filing claims, uh, looking at claims data, identifying whether they will be rejected or whether such claims are rejected in the past. So we basically bring, bring in all of that intelligence out and we provide it to healthcare providers or accountable care organizations uh, to even governments and so that they can risk, uh, risk stratify their population and plan the preventative care and as well as their campaigns accordingly. All right, that's great. So the extent of technology usage is absolutely to an extent. Yeah, exactly. So this is probably the, the preventative care in the right sense of that word mm -hmm. because you need to first of all understand the problem before you create value. Mm -hmm. The problem today is that we don't know enough about our patient and even if we do, the way a typical healthcare uh, episode acts is a patient comes to a doctor's office, mm -hmm. the doctor looks at the electronic medical records, he advises him medication and then when the patient is gone, the records are not looked again at. What we basically do is, this is an automated process, mm -hmm. the moment patient leaves the office or even if the patient is not coming back, uh, the, the uh, machine learning algorithms will keep running through the data, keep pulling in insights and keep giving it back to accountable care organization and hospitals mm -hmm. so that they can plan their outreach. So for example, looking at the data, they realize that this guy is has a high risk of um, uh, getting diabetes. So you can plan your uh, care prevention and your care plan accordingly today. So I can probably reach out to that patient and say, hey, can you come back? I want to do your HB1AC. Before even it happens. To Before you. even it happens. And, and hence planning preventative care becomes that much more worth. Uh, I would also, because uh, this concept of predictive analytics is still very nas nascent in Asian markets, especially in India, mm -hmm. I would basically appeal the government of India to, to risk ratify their population mm -hmm. so that all the preventative campaigns that they run today, uh, and NPCDCS is a big campaign that the government runs for diabetes and right. uh, cancer and stroke and heart patients and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. if they get this data to be stratified, by a company like say ours or other companies in this space and get predictive analytics module kind of project which is what is going to happen in the next five years or what is the population at risk then care planning becomes that much easy. Right. Ms. Das, what is the extent of technology, uh, big data, cloud analytics and how do you think it would be able to help the marginalized communities because uh, this is where healthcare's major challenge lies, accessibility right. and affordability. Correct. And as I said, uh, today predictive analytics is used at a great scale even in public health programs, whether it is reducing the readmissions. Uh, which is a big penalty in the US and uh, a great cost in India as well uh, or basically telling people more about their health care and get them proactive, making health collaborative. All of this has a basis on the data that you obtain from patients or hospitals or EMR, EHR uh, records or HMIS vendors. So I think it has to be collaborative, HMIS vendors, EMR vendors, hospitals, mm -hmm. government, everybody should put together the pool of data and send it for risk ratification so that you can get more insights out of it. Sometimes predictive analytics also takes into consideration, I think most of the times, unstructured data. So data that is not put into context like doctor notes or discharge notes. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not something which has been referred all the time, mm -hmm. a patient-doctor interaction happens. But this has a lot of insights uh, that helps uh, planning better care. Mm -hmm. um, Government of India, for example, when they plan a public health program and they do uh, diagnostic tests just to identify what is the population at risk, uh, the bugs shouldn't just stop there. There is so much more that you can do with that data. So today if I get, uh, say, data from a diabetes speciality uh, chain, say a Dr. Mohan's or so on and so forth, I can do a, a, a lot of stuff there, helping the patient identify comorbidities at a very early stage. I can help plan their care better. I can also get to know the patterns, the behavior, the biases, uh, the way they realize value to an extent. 
so all of this uh, adds so much more value to the entire healthcare system than anything else. All right. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, Swast Bharat to Sabka Vikas? I think Swast Bharat to Sabka Vikas uh, can only be possible because we know that there's a big divide between the number of patients in the country and the number of doctors. And then there are that many hospitals that can serve. So in 2013, the concept of telemedicine, remote monitoring, M Health was, was the buzz and government also invested a whole lot of amount in setting these centers up. Uh, I think if a government takes a, a step further, which is not that great a cost, mm. to also uh, re-look at the data that they have collected right. and re-approach those patients that have been stratified already. So I think that will that will definitely help uh, because see, uh, even when a doctor prescribes, for example, I'm a doctor, mm. when I prescribe, I have a memory of a person, of a similar patient that might have visited me five years back. He would have gone through a phase. So right. if, if this patient looks like that patient, which is he's into alcoholism, he's diabetic, he's underweight, and he, uh, he is on, um, say, chronic hypertension, mm -hmm. then I know that probably the life cycle or the path of diagnosis will also be the same. How about getting millions of such references in the mind? Humanly, it's not possible, but through machine and through algorithms, it is possible. So it helps in accurate diagnosis. Mm. It helps in absolutely personalized care planning. And it also helps in predicting a disease which actually increases patient satisfaction to a large extent and enables a hospital to guide the patient better within the facility and also when he's at home. Mm. So my message for Swast Bharat is, uh, all the efforts that the government is doing sh should come to a center stage. The repository of the data and tons and tons of data that you are collecting has to be digitalized first. Once it is digitized, then this data need to be relooked by machine learning algorithms. And then a hybrid CDSS should be provided at the primary care, which can help doctors both in the rural areas as well as urban areas mm -hmm. to prescribe better and to plan better. With smart cities coming into picture, do you think this would uh, make a difference? Oh, definitely. I think uh, this is one key ingredient of, uh, of something as smart as bringing a smart city all together. And healthcare and education have always been at the center stage when smart cities are being planned. Right. So if, uh, if techniques like this and new advanced technologies like this can be pulled into the system right at the uh, time of the blueprint is created, I think that will add a lot of value. Right. In a way, this is definitely good. However, don't you think this would add to the gap which is already there between the rural and the urban healthcare sector? And how can that be bridged? Sure. So, see, what I would tell you is India, in context of India, India is a very unique economy. Uh, you have uh, 15,000 millionaires of the world residing in India today. 9% of the population is super rich and 75% doctors practice in urban areas. Mm -hmm. So there is a product for these people, and then there is a public health product, which is also for the rural healthcare masses, where data is collected on paper, door to door, whether it's immunization data, or it's prevention data, or diagnostic data. Once that data become digitized, predictive analytics is gonna do the same thing to an urban data or a rural data. It's all about data, data, data. So once you have the information with you, mm. I can go through this information three or four times and can give you insights about now how should you plan your public health care and how should you plan your hospital care. So uh, as far as divide is concerned, I think it's more about bridging the divide where you get equitable access to healthcare because now you have data. Otherwise, taking healthcare um, to the masses and especially to far-flung areas becomes a challenge and people do it on a hunch basis mm -hmm. or some small market research basis which you have to take with a grain of salt. Predictive analytics brings unbiased results, categorically removing outliers so that the insights that have come in help you plan your public health uh, systems better and that has been used in developed countries for years now.